everyone, I am Erika of beatingschool.com and you are watching No One Has to Beat Alone, my weekly beating workshop to make sure that every beater all around the world has company. Today we are going to work on my friend Zuzi's Bergamo earrings. And I hope that you can hear me and I hope that you can see me. Please let me know in a comment if it's all right. I see a Facebook user saying good morning. Good morning, dear Facebook user friend. Kristen says that she can see me and she can hear me. Thank you so much, Kristen, for letting me know. Yo, Sin, hoi, who had had? Mariana is here, Facebook user friend. Elinor Corin is here, Kata is here and more Facebook user friends and Cindy and Orit. Please note it, that if I did not say your name, then it's because I don't see your name, unfortunately. You can watch today's uh, workshop from the Beading School Facebook page, which is like a public space on the internet. You can watch it even if you are not registered on Facebook. And you can also watch it from the Beading School Facebook club, which is like our safe haven and be the sisterhood. And that's not visible for outside eyes. So in that case that you are watching from the club, then you might need to uh, per, uh, give extra permission to my broadcasting program to see your name. So then I can say that Hi, Elena, and hi, Joanne, and Katarina, and Gunnel, and Ellie, and Marike, and Eve, and Liv, and Shelly, and Catherine, and Angelica, and Anita, and Terry, and also some Facebook user friends whom I don't see, unfortunately. And Claire is here also. Hi, Claire. So are you prepared, ladies? Bergamo earrings coming? Or actually, of course, you can make it to whatever you would like it to be. There are many, many, many possibilities waiting for you that you can make true on your own beading mat, on your own colors, in your own shape, with your little personalizations or big personalizations. So the PDF tutorial that makes it easier for you to follow today's broadcast, but also that you can print or you can save to your computer. It is waiting for you at no one has to be uh, Luckily, the uh, solution to send it directly to your email address is working again. So it should work for you in the normal way that you type in your email if you would like to have the gift version of it and then it appears in your inbox. I tested it a few minutes ago. It worked for me, but it might take a minute or two to arrive. So please, please be patient. There is also a support version available, so you can buy the PDF uh, for five euros and support today's video. And yeah. I'm really looking forward. My fingers are itching. My beadmat is ready. I hope yours is too. Angelica says that she was looking forward to Zuzi's bugle invention. Me too. I really like how the bugle beads, the uh, twisty, um, twist milky beads are framing this flower-like motif. They give it a nice like picture frame all around. In the wind, while also Robin joined, Louisa. Louisa had COVID for the first, uh, for the third time. I'm so sorry. Oh, but I'm happy that you recovered. I hope you are all right now, Louisa. And Sherry and Jennifer and Antoinette. Facebook user also letting us know that the tutorial uh, arrived all right. And Irina is here. Oh, Cindy is enjoying a nice coffee. Wonderful. And Malia is here, waiting for her package. 
So ladies, while you are taking care of the tutorial download, saving it to your computers, then let's look at the material list and let's check if we have everything what we need. So let's start with the super duos. We need a few super duo beads. For one motif, we need actually 12 pieces. Then we need also six pieces of four millimeter fire polished beads and six pieces of three millimeter fire polished beads. You will need some Miyuki 12 millimeter twist beads to frame the motif. Six pieces, now the magic number is six. We are multiplying sections, groups, beads by six. Mm, so six twist beads. But if you don't have it, then don't worry because since they are on the outside edge, and we don't connect anything else around. There are just two points of connections uh, next to the twist beads. Then you can also use a shorter version of a bugle bead and add more seed beads to it or just seed beads. It's up to you. You will need to play with the shapes and the exact number, but please note that even if you don't have the twists, then it is possible to make this in a little bit different variation. And if you have the twists, then read on. It's a good shape. It's sturdy. It's not sharp. It's nice to work with and it comes in nice colors, of course. From the seed beads, you will need size 15 and size 11 around seed beads. From the size 15, Zuzi in the original version used two different colors. I will also make mine with two different colors, but it's up to you if you would like to make a more unified look by using only one color of seed beads. That's my trick to make it like more coherent. Or if you want to make it more like, yeah, I don't know, different. <laughs> then you also need one color of the round 15s and one color of the size 11 Miyuki Delicas. And then the rest is up to you. As you can see, Zuzi added a bezel, a square stitch bezel, two hole cabochon bead on top of it. It's a nice little two hole bead, which can be a focal, can be a connector. And in this case, it is making the earring longer because Zuzi likes these elongated shapes just like I do. And then if you are making earrings, then of course, ear wires or ear studs or your favorite type of earring components, whatever that might be. Or yeah, you can make it into a pendant, a necklace, a bracelet, or you can make it grow and connect more stuff around it. Totally, totally up to you. And I will be super curious to see your variations after the weekend. You also made some wonderful pieces last week from the Gigaro motif. And I was like spending like, lots of time going through your pictures and admiring them because they look really, really, really nice. And so many different variations. In the meanwhile, also Katarina says, this is the first time that I beat when I am watching the tutorial. I hope it works. The last time I watched only. Katarina, what a nice occasion then. And if you have a question, then just ask and I will do my best to help. Also your beading buddies are here watching together. So it will be all right. Then... Angelica will be using a new color of the uh, twist bugles. She's absolutely in love with the new color. It's a good one, right? And then Joanna joined us. Also having a coffee break. Then Eve is asking, what is the necklace I am wearing? It's called the Rebel. It was uh, originally in the Beadworkers Guild journal, but now it's also in the bead shop. 
and Elena is here, and Cora is here. Then we have a Facebook user friend from Washington. And someone's box is out for delivery. Exciting. Let us know when it's here. And then Katarina is asking how long the thread should be. I am always working with a belt of being span because I never know in advance where it leads me. Maybe I will want to add some more. And that's my comfortable length. Mm, usually it's enough for whatever I do. If there is a leftover, then it's not too long of a leftover. So I don't feel like, oh my God, I'm wasting precious fire line. Mm -hmm. But I also don't like working with more than a wingspan because as I'm pulling the thread again and again and again and again and again through the... I had lots of coffee today. Uh, so the beads, then uh, it might get damaged and I don't want that. So if a motive requires more than a wingspan, then I bead it with two threads. I add after a while more thread. So the thread stays healthy and the jewel stays nice for a long time. And Erica is here, finally made it for a live. Welcome, Erica. Wonderful to have you here. Then, yay, Facebook user got a friend, got her box yesterday. Kristen has to go. Thanks for saying hi, Kristen. Have a nice weekend. Terry is using different colors because she's traveling. So, lovely is. If everything is well prepared, shall we start beading? We shall. <laughs> so I will hide now my face. I will hide now the picture of the finished jewel. You can keep it open in a different browser on a different device if you want to go back to it and look at it again. But I will remove it from the from the screen. I will also switch to my hand camera. So afterwards, please let me know again if you can see me and hear me well, because as you know, it's a tricky moment when I'm switching techy stuff. So please help me by telling me if you will still be able to hear me and see me. So can you hear me? Hi, Deb, in the meanwhile, and hi, Cindy. I hope you can hear me. Let me know, let me know. I might start singing if I think that you don't hear me and do, you don't want that, believe me. Amanda joined us. Amanda is also joining for the first time. Oh my God. Wonderful. Okay, you say that you can hear me and uh, and and uh, see the camera, so I won't be singing. I will be beading. So let's see what does the first step hold for us. I am working with my usual. 4LB or 0 0.12 millimeter fire line. Uh, it's about a wingspan, but I suppose that actually a little bit less will be enough. And I will start by picking up six pieces of the four millimeter check fire polished beads. I have a different needle. You might notice that I have a shorter different needle today. I'm not loving it, so my favorite is still my usual size 11 tulip. However, uh, the one that I was working with just broke and then I found this one and until it breaks, then I'm using it. But I, I'm not loving this short needle unless I'm doing bead embroidery. So first step, I picked up the six pieces of the four millimeter fire polished beads. I am joining them into a circle. And then I will add more and more beads 
we're around. So this is how my circle looks like. I like to retrace the complete thread path and then bead for a third time through the very first bead too, when I am starting with any kind of circlish motif. And my tail thread and my working thread are hanging in opposite directions from the very first bead. Now I am adding size 11 Miyuki Delica Japanese seed beads. Magic number is six for this moment uh, motive. So I had have six fire polished beads in my circle and I will be adding six Miyuki Delicas in between. Exiting a fire polished bead, picking up a Delica, beading through the next fire polished bead and then again and again. Ooh, and Facebook user friend says that her box just arrived, the Dolce Vita of the Weeding School Academy. And I'm super happy for you. What a wonderful timing. Enjoy unboxing very, very much. I'm adding now my fifth Miyuki Delica. And then when I add the sixth one, then I continue with the same thread path until I will exit the second new Miyuki Delica that I have added because I don't want to start adding new beads right away after the first new bead from this step, there would be a risk that the motif would get a little bit squished. So this is how it looks like at the moment, my six fire, uh, fire polished beads and six Miyuki Delicas in between. Facebook user friend is very happy about her box and advent orders arriving. And Elena says that she also just received all three big boxes of her advent and adventure and the big spool of fire line. Enjoy it very much, Elena. <laughs> Your treasures. And now, I will be adding groups of beads between the delicas that I added in step two. Every group of beads will consist of four beads, around 15 Miyuki seed beads, two super duos, and one more round 15. Please always look at the second hole of the super duos or push quickly your, uh, your uh, needle through it to make sure that the second holes are also open and they are not clogged by a little shard of glass. That's super important. It gets very frustrating if you discover it later. Please keep repeating the same all around your motif. So exiting a Delica, picking up round 15, two super duos and one more round 15, and then beading through the next Delica bead. Around and around. Yosin is also very happy today with her advent goodies. By the way, if anyone already would like to make sure that you can participate in the advent in 2023 too, then we have 
the calendar available on the website. So you can already reserve your spot if you would like to. In the meanwhile, I added three groups of the beads already and I continue with the same. Today I'm going to use exactly the same colors as Zuzi did in her original. Are you also using the original colors or are you making a variation? I know already that Terry is making a variation because she's traveling. I'm curious, what are you up to on your bead mats? There are so many nice colors of super duos available. I think it's uh, maybe the bead shape that gets made in the most possible color combinations when I'm checking like mm, uh, warehouses, when I'm selecting colors for the, for the beading school bead shop, then I have a feeling that super duos are the ones which, which have the biggest color versatility. Joyce says in the meanwhile that she's working with the original colors. They are just so nice together, right? How Zuzi selected them for this motif. So I like making my own color combinations, but okay, I'm still, we are still at the beginning of uh, La Dolce Vita. So I, I really did not have enough of these, of course, yet. But also I love how this motif looks like in this combination. So I added all six groups that I needed to, and then I continue again with the same thread path until I am exiting the second new group of beads. Just as before, the simple reason for that is that it keeps the motif better shaped when I start adding beads in the next step, as I will not pull right away on the first group and the tension in the thread gets more divided. And there will be less deformation, even if you keep tight thread tension. So I'm finishing beading through the second group. And in the meanwhile, I would also like to greet Kinga. She says, hello everyone, that project is fabulous. I love it. Enjoy beading it, dear Kinga. And Samia is here. And Elena says, crystal magic orchid super duos and dark prairie dot fire polished beads. I'm curious of that, Elena. And then Eleanor is working with La Dolce Vita, but La Dolce Vita by night with black and different shades of bronze. Oh, that's going to look luxurious, Eleanor. Yosin is working today with different colors, with pink and olive green. Oh, and Eve says, I'm using the beautiful Duracoat galvanized dark coral in size 15. That's such a nice color of seed beads. I love it too. Curious to see yours, Eve. Irina says, I'm using almost all the colors from the box, except for the super duos, which are copper. That fits, I'm sure, absolutely perfectly. And then we have the designer here, Zuzi. Zuzi says, hello everyone and Erica. I just want to greet you. Have a great time reading. Hello Zuzi and thank you so much for designing this for us. The meanwhile, I actually decided I will continue also through the third group of beads because I feel a little bit that I left some tiny gaps in between the beads. So I need to pull them together more. Stop. 
step three is finished. And let's continue with step four. In step four, we are adding round milky seed beads in between the groups from the previous step, size 11 round seed beads. So they will be placed directly above the Delica beads in the same size, but this time I'm adding, remember, please, uh, round seed beads. So I'm exiting a group of beads that I picked up in the previous step. I add to my needle around 11 and then I bead through the next four beads round 15 two super duos and one more round 15 and then again I pick up around 11 and I bead through the next four beads to get into position In the meanwhile, Kiza says that she's using the original colors. Donna says hot pink super duos, heavy metal navy, and burgundy fire polished. I'm trying to match a shirt I own. That sounds awesome, the pink and the navy. And then Facebook user friend says, I'm using all the same colors except the super duo. I am using crystal lila. Uh, Vega Luster Super Duos. Sounds nice. And Zuzi is managing the circus at home, not reading at the moment. And how is the beading going, ladies? We also have some first timers here. So I would like to make sure that you can follow the tutorial nice and easy and all your questions get answered. So please let me know if you, uh, if, uh, how is it going, if it's all right, if you need help somewhere. Just one thing that please always, when I am doing a step, then please ask questions for example, like show, please, Erica, show me one more time about the specific step that I am doing. Because like, if you tell me now that Erica, show me once more, how do you do step two, then I'm on step four. So I, I unfortunately can't go back to it. So please make sure to ask your questions when I am doing that step so I can show you better. So this is how it looks like at the moment. Katarina says that it's, it works good for her. I'm super happy to hear that, Katarina. Thank you for letting me know. In the meanwhile, I added my last round 11, and afterwards I bead through a round 15 and both super duos. There will be a change of thread direction now because I'm also beading through the outside still open hole of the second super duo that I have just crossed through its first hole. So my thread is now hanging towards the gap in between two super duo beads. And in step two, I'm going to fill in the gaps in between the second holes of the super duos. There will always be a small gap when I am filling in beads between super duos that are next to each other. And then there will be a big gap when there are some seed beads in between the super duos. So I'm going to refer to this part as the small gap and this part as the big gap. And they are interchangeably following each other six times small gap, six times big gap. So let's start with a small gap. For the small gap, I need three seed beads 
a milky delica, a size 15 seed bead, and another milky delica. I am still using for the round 15. Ah, keep losing the delica because of the short needle. I don't like it. So I am still using the same color of the size 15s as before. And then I'm beading through the second open hole of the next super duo. The seed beads automatically jump, jumped into a nice little V shape, a sharp V shape. But if that's not your case, then you might need to adjust with your fingers a little bit the shape of the seed bead group to make sure that it's nice. Then we have a big gap coming. And for that, we pick up around 15, a three millimeter fire polished bead and another round 15. And then I bead through the second hole of the next fire polished bead. And I will keep repeating the same all around. So Delica round 15, Delica into the small gap, and then round 15, three millimeter fire polished bead, and another round 15 into the big gap. Again, Delica, round 15, Delica, and then round 15, fire polished bead, round 15 to the big gap. By the way, just a little interesting information. You can watch, you know, the broadcast live from two places, the club and the page. However, through my broadcasting program, I can see the combined number of beaders who are beading now the Bergamo uh, uh, motif. And there are 74 of us at the moment. Okay, plus me. So 75 of us working at the same time on the same motif. And that feels so good. So many of us from all around the world. Oh my God, Angelica knows me too well. She says, I already know Erica is going to put a suwon in the middle. Indeed. And I just unpacked my new AB suwon box which I also received recently, just like some of you who grabbed it during the Advent Adventure. And I think I need to add an AB Suwon. My fingers were itching for AB Suwon rhinestones for such a long time. In the past, they were available and then Preciosa stopped making them. And then we pulled some threads, we arranged some collaborations, and now six millimeter variations of Preciosa AB rhinestones in a Suwon base in a metal core are available again, just at beginning score in a box and also outside of a box. <laughs> Think outside of a box. No, in this case, a box is the best option. <laughs> Erica, stop drinking coffee. <laughs> in the meanwhile, Terry says that her box is out for delivery. So she can start working with La Dolce Vita. And Cindy was also thinking about a rhinestone. <laughs> so I think I'm not the only one who, who loves working with the swoo ones. In the meanwhile, I just added 
my last three millimeter fire polished bead. And in this case, when you are working with a mandala-like motif, so you are going like around and around, then sometimes you might feel like, okay, I'm not sure if my stretch tension is uh, too much, too little, if it's all right. Because if you pull too much, then the motif might get curly. If you don't pull enough, then it might get floppy. So you want to make sure that it's just right. Lagom, as our Swedish friends says, say. And my way of doing is that I pull it a bit too much. I pull my thread a bit too much. And then I put down the motif on the bead mat. And I gently tap on it until just as much thread slides back to the beads, how much I need. And if it's a bit like floppy, then I repeat the thread pass one more time. So just some tricks if you, if you need some extra help. You can also sit on it afterwards if it's curly and you want to uh, flatten it. You might want to eat chocolate and sit on it again. So there are lots of tricks in a beater's arsenal. <laughs> and I am now retracing the thread path a bit. And I want to finish in a size 11 seed bead, size 15 seed bead that is sitting in between two Miyuki Delicas in the middle of a small gap between the outside holes of the Super Duos. So this is how it looks like, my thread exiting this bit here. And <laughs> um, let's see what step six holds for us. Now we are adding the Miyuki Twist beads also in combination with some Miyuki Delica size 11s. So I start by picking up a Miyuki Delica and I attach it to the round 15 by beading one more time through the round 15 that I was just exiting and then I bead through the Delica for a second time too. I want to keep here tight tension to make sure that the beads are connected uh, with, uh, to each other without any tiny gaps. You might also want to retrace this tiny square stitch one more time if you feel like you need that. It's up to you. Oh my God. And we have a literature loving beader here who says, I have the complete works of Shakespeare book. I put on top of it overnight to flatten it out. <laughs> I love your, I love your way of, way of flattening your beadwork. I actually still from university times, I have uh, the complete works of Shakespeare sitting on my bookshelf, some, bookshelf somewhere. And I have to confess that I wasn't opening it very much since I finished university. So I might pull it from the bookshelf. <laughs> I don't guarantee opening it again. I have nothing against Shakespeare. He's just not resonating with me so much these days. Uh, but yeah, he might come uh, useful. <laughs> As Lika says, they say, and they say classical literature has no practical use nowadays. <laughs> yeah, that's outrageous, right? <laughs> so, after securing the first Delica to the round 15, I picked up a Miyuki twist and another Delica. Right away, I want to secure the Delica to the next round 15, also sitting in the middle of a small gap. So I bead through that round 15 in the opposite direction towards the first Delica that I have attached. In these cases, 
pull the thread gently and make sure that the thread is not uh, sliding on the edge of the uh, twist bead. It's the same with bugles. It's the same with bicones. You want to pull the thread in a way so it's sliding directly out of the hole and not on the edge of the hole because there are some beads Actually, not just these, but you might want to also be careful with fire polished beads or any other beads, but with these beads that I mentioned just a bit more, because the thread might get damaged otherwise. And then I attached, I finished attaching the Delica to the round 15 by beading one more time through the Delica. And now I keep repeating the same. So I pick up a twist and a delica and I bead backwards through the next round 15. And I finish the step, finish the part of the step by beading through the delica one more time. So the frame is nicely shaping around the middle of the motif. The middle consists of lots of tiny beads. And then the twist beads are combing down the design by adding, by forming a shape around it. So twist, delica, beading backwards through the round 15 and one more time through the Delica. And this is how we bead all around the motif. While I continue with this part that I would also like to say that I love that I'm already seeing some clementine motifs popping up in the club. Just quickly, this is the motif that I am talking about. The first signature jewel for the Dolce Vita box designed also by Zuzi. Zuzi is like excelling absolutely with this box, I would say. And the ver versions that you posted, they look wonderful. And I already saw some comments telling us about other ideas, how to use it, or that some beaders plan to make it in different color com combinations. Oh, and Angelica is adding a deep CAB crystal for the middle of Pergamo. Nice. I think that will that will be a really nice addition. And if you are an academy student and you haven't downloaded yet the new tutorial, the Clementine, then you can simply just navigate to beadingschool.com, log into your account account, and so the Bead shop knows that it's you and you are a student, and then it reduces the price of the tutorial to zero. So you can just simply download it in case that you are an academy student at the moment. I'm adding now the last, the last twist bead. I'm looking for Delica. Hmm. I ran out of delicas. Need to find some. Oh, okay. I have a whole package here. And Sherry says, indeed, I'm almost done with Clementine. It's an awesome design. I'm glad you like it, Sherry. I think it's a really nice one. I love how Zuzi bezels the main element of it but also how she uh, kept adding and adding to it. And now that I am adding the last twist bead, 
then I simply bead through the last delica. Well, that was the first delica, in fact, <laughs> that I have added. And actually, when I, if you felt until this moment that the motif might be a little bit floppy, then now this is the time when it gets like sturdy when you pull the thread through the twist. And we will repeat uh, the repeat going through the twists in a bit different variation. So we start by beading through the very first twist bead that we have added. And then we pick up three round 15s. This is where I'm going to use the second color, which is actually the same pretty much as the twist beads. And then I bead through the next twist. And this is how I bead all around, pull my thread, and then the three round 15s will sit next to the Miyuki Delica in between the two twists. In the meanwhile, Terry says that she already finished her first Clementine. And she says, I want to wear it to the grocery store, but I think it's too dressy for my t-shirt. Terry, if you feel like wearing it, Wear it, please. Proudly, because you are. You beaded it so beautifully and be happy with it. Who cares if it's the grocery store, if it's a t-shirt. If it makes you happy at the moment to wear it, then wear it, please. <laughs> and Maria is here. Nice to see you, Maria. Ladies, do you already have some ideas how you want to finish your bergamo? I'm curious to learn. Zuzi also included some ideas on the last page of the tutorial to bring you some inspiration. So as you can see on the first picture, there is the basic variation that she showed also on the photograph. But then just below you see an idea for attaching the e-wires right to the motif itself, but then adding some nice long glass drops in metal setting at the bottom. So that's another type of earring that you can make, or you can also leave the motive on its own, of course. Then Zuzi also had the idea for connecting uh, several pieces into a bracelet, or four pieces into a majestic necklace, and you can even add something extra in the middle. So that sounds very, very fascinating, I think. And, okay, Angelica would like to see how I am attaching the crystal in the middle. I don't know it yet, Angelica. <laughs> uh, I can try improvising. <laughs> but actually, I have to confess that I am a bit tired today. So I'm not sure that my brain would work as promptly as... <laughs> <laughs> Improvisation needs it to work. However, next Tuesday, we are having a live design session during Coffee Time with Erica with beads from the Dolce Vita box. So I would like to invite all of you to join Coffee Time with Erica on Tuesday. And let's see where do the remaining beads, which I still have in my box, there are lots of beads in it. As, okay, I have two boxes at the moment. I worked from one box when I was designing the jewels, and then I had one more box to box for the unboxing when I was showing you what's inside. So I still have plenty of beads. 
and I will play with them during the live design session on Tuesday. And Yosin says in the meanwhile, you learn me to wear my jewels even when I think it's probably too fancy, but I love it. Yosin and you made me so happy with, with what you wrote. All of you are so uh, talented and you make so beautiful jewels. Be proud of them and be daring and accept the compliments when they come. They will come. And, you know, like a few years ago, when someone gave me a compliment on something, like, yeah, I like the earrings you made or whatever, then I, I, I was always just blushing and I did not feel good and in those situations and then i have a very outspoken friend <laughs> and he was like erica just say thank you or shut up and i was laughing of course and yeah he kind of taught me to to to, to accept comfort uh, compliments and just yeah be happy in that moment so ladies be happy with your jewels and be super proud of them in the meanwhile, Jill says that she's hoping to make the full pendant. Sherry too. And Terry too. <laughs> Gisela likes the inspiration. Gunnar is using lilac and turquoise and silver. Cindy says, I'm thinking of making the necklace too. Not sure. It's, thank you, Erica. It's beautiful. I'm glad that you ladies like it. Facebook user friend joining. Eve is asking, what color are the three millimeter fire polished beads you are using? Just a moment, Eve, I will look it up for you. It's the one, oh, it's the, the you are asking for the three millimeter ones, not the four millimeter ones. Sorry, I grabbed the bad bag. The uh, four millimeter ones are actually the chalk white mint luster. And the three millimeter ones, Okay, they are also from the box, the Fuchsia version of the box, and I can't find the bag at the moment. But if any of you who has the Fuchsia box on her bead mat has the bag available for the 3mm ones, can, could you please share it with Eve? Thank you. And then... Oh, Terry says, I had a rough week last week and was feeling a little down, and this has lifted my spirit so much. Thank you, Erica. Dear Terry, I hope the coming days will be a lot better, and I'm glad that it lifted your mood. Facebook user friend was wearing her pendant yesterday. Wonderful. And someone has the bag. They are matte metallic gold iris. Thank you so much. Thank you also, Yosin and Marianne. And lovelies, I finished my motif now. I will, I think, make it into a little brooch. Let's see. I also made a little brooch last week from Gigaro. And I'm super happy with it. So... I shall continue my brooch collection. I have some other fun things to share with you. And okay, also fun that is not so fun. So the fun thing is, again, that the, 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 the Bergamo tutorial is available now, the free version until Monday. So make sure to save it to your computer before it goes away. Then also enjoy beading Clementine from Susie very much. It's a beautiful, intricate design that you can learn a lot from. I, I really love it. And if you get intrigued by different color combinations, then please note that 
we have now the little rectangles, the six times eight millimeter rectangles in metal claw settings available also in other colors, colors in the beading school bead shop. Altogether, 11 colors are available now because the juicy peach is already sold out. That was the most popular by far. And you can use these little cabochons in many different ways. In the bezel of Clementine, as you could see, but also you can use it as a connector between pieces, for example, for a bracelet or for making an earring longer, how I did here. Or you can have it also as the focal, for example. And that's what we are going to do next week during No One Has to Be the Lone. So this is the bracelet that we are going to work on. And here indeed a rectangle is the focal of the little motif that we are going to work on. I will need, I think, six pieces of the motifs for a small size, bra small size bracelet, but you can also make the motif into an earring, into a little pendant, or you can make it into a necklace strap, for example. So there are variations. So that's some other news. And then I also would like to mention that you can find a new feature of the tutorial on the last page. We got the idea from Dawn and she asked us if we could add a coloring sheet of the motif on the last page. So it can, it helps you to make your own color combinations. You can print it and then color it. You can also color it in your computer if you have a graphic design program. And yeah, coloring is also just like beading, calm, calming and peaceful. So why not color some beaded motifs? So please let us know how do you like this if you are actually using this and then if you snap a picture and show us your colored pages in the club so we see that you are enjoying it, then we will keep adding the coloring sheets to future tutorials too. Unfortunately, I also have a not so fun news as for tomorrow, we had scheduled a storytelling night with Chenga for the Dolce Vita team. Unfortunately, Chenga's grandma, uh, grandmother uh, passed away today. So unfortunately, we need to reschedule. My thoughts are with Chenga, or friend and storyteller so we will figure out a new date for the Dolce Vita storytelling night uh, for February. I am at the moment I'm a bit late as December was hectic. Uh, I am uploading now at the moment the Lucia's Light storytelling uh, recording. So it will be soon available for you in the classroom. So you can enjoy it, listen to it again until Chenge is coming to us in February. Some more things that you can do during the weekend. Please visit the Beading School blog. There is a brand new face-to-face -face interview with Ariane and it's awesome. You can see there Ariane wearing a beard. Can you believe that? Is Erica joking? Is it true? You have to visit the Beading School blog to check if I'm making this up or is Ariane wearing a fake beard in the, in the, in the article? Indeed. Let's see. <laughs> then... Next week, I already mentioned, we are beading together this bracelet and we are also meeting for coffee time. Ladies, thank you so much for all your comments regarding Chenge. 
You are very kind. Thank you so much, ladies. And for today, I would like to thank you for your, for your time, for the nice hour that we could spend together. And I would like to wish you a nice, peaceful, creative weekend with your loved ones. Please keep posting in the club. Keep each other company and keep inspiring each other. See you next week, ladies. Bye-bye.